Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Julie and I am the author of the blog CapturingWonderland.com. But let's quickly get into this video and you will see all the things I had to do to turn this ugly piece of furniture into this new gorgeous piece of furniture. Got the second coat of a stripper on the top and I'm about to take these drawers outside, outside and start sanding them. The drawers have damage from the children's and so I will not be able to stain them. Therefore, I am going to do a really good sanding and then I'm gonna be painting them. I think I'm gonna paint them black. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm leaning towards because black is way easier to clean. And also if I sand them down mostly to wood, if I paint them with black, I can then come in and distress and see the wood underneath, but it'll still hide the damage. So that's my plan for it right now. So let us go sand a drawer while we wait for the second coat of stripper to do its work. I write about all different subjects on my blog, including anything homemaking. Basically building a home from scratch. Everything from homemaking to DIYs, furniture renovation, very similar content to what I have here on my channel, which is the same type of things. DIY, furniture restoration, and thrifting. All ways that I am able to build my home on a, on a very small single income for a family size of seven. We have five kids. So today I am going to show you how I turned this dresser into a beautiful, spectacular, classic piece of furniture that I am going to use in my home. Now, some of the things that you will see in this video may not work if you were going to do furniture restoration for selling. I am not trying to make a business out of my furniture restoration. I am basically refinishing very cheap or free items that I find from thrift stores, Facebook Marketplace, flea markets, things like that. So I am building my home. Every single piece of furniture that I have restored on this channel is a piece of furniture for my personal home. If I was going to do this as a business, I would actually have to employ much more detailed tactics and kind of look at it from a different perspective. My perspective is, is that I love old pieces of furniture. So I'm trying my very hardest to not strip all of the character off of a piece of furniture, even if it would be considered a flaw. So this is a very imperfect piece of furniture and I am okay with that. So this is like day three on this dresser and I didn't work on it very much yesterday which I should have but I did other things because I was procrastinating hard. <laughs> it had reached the point of ugly. You know that point in every project where you're like this thing is hideous and a lost cause. Why did I even start this? <laughs> or like, you're like, oh my gosh, I, I have screwed this up. I should not have done this. Um, so yeah, it's uh, about a million hours of scraping out of these tiny little detail holes here, trying to get all the paint out. Mm, I'm not going to stain this dresser though. I think I'm just going to leave it as is after I get it done and just coat it with polycrylic for um, protection because I feel like, tell me if this, this resonates with you at all. I feel like in my earlier years, like in my 20s, my earlier 20s, I wanted to cover things up and try to make them look as perfect as possible. Now that I'm in my later 30s, I'm starting to regret ever having done that to furniture. Maybe it's because I'm getting older. <laughs> so with this piece of furniture, it was painted so I knew that I could not leave it as that was because honestly it was a really bad paint job anyway. Someone just slapped some paint on this beautiful piece and I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to strip it down as far as I can, try to get the reddish tone off of it and then I'm going to sand it beautiful and I'm going to coat it with polyacrylic and I'm just going to leave it that way because I really feel like every time I try to go extra on things I end up regretting it and not liking it because that's not actually my style, which is stupid and crazy. Like, 
I want to try all these processes because I'm, I'm curious about them. So I figure, okay, I'll just try it on this one thing that's not working currently. But then I end up regretting ever doing it. So my curiosity gets the best of me just like Alice. And I don't want to do that. I want to stick more true to the aesthetic that I actually appreciate and my actual style. So I am going to continue scraping in these holes here trying to get the last of the stripper out because I did use citrus strip and you saw that entire process which was quite the ordeal but I am so glad that I figured out how to strip the the citrus strip off without having to sand it all off that was crazy I cannot believe that I have never tried just scrubbing with a sponge with some Dawn dish soap before and that worked so well. It's just crazy. It just comes right off. Even some of this stain was coming off with the Dawn. So yeah, I just thought I would give you an update. So I'm gonna get back to this. What? All right, I am on the very last parts of this dresser. So I'm getting really excited. I have done detail hand sanding. My hands are a mess now because of it, but it's okay. It's all worth it in the end. Um, around the entire dresser, all of the detail work, except for just these last two sides. So I'm going to do that right now, and then I'm going to take it outside and use my orbital sander to sand the big flat spots. So let's get that done right now. I did a little bit of scraping just to save myself some time with my little contour scraper. This thing is a lifesaver. It comes with a bunch of different, I'm not even going to be able to remember the word, um, accessories that go on the top that you can switch out depending on what you need for detail scraping. This thing is a lifesaver. It's like $15 at Home Depot, but you can also get it from Amazon and I will certainly have that linked below to help you out. Let's go and finish sanding this thing. I want to see it completely raw. I mean, it's raw right now, but it still has some of that ornish, ornish, orangish hue to it. And I'm excited to see that orange stripped off because I've gotten a little bit of a peek into the natural wood color of this thing and it's going to be gorgeous. So. Let's go and do that. Okay, I've gotten it fully sanded. It is hot out here, y'all. I moved it into the sun because I'm going to use household bleach with this process. I don't think it's the actual color of the wood. I think it's literally the stain color that is still left on the wood. Since I don't want to sand until kingdom come to get all of the orange off of it, I'm going to attempt to see if I can bleach it using household bleach to just get rid of that additional, that extra orange that's left over. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm using concentrated version, no splash, because that's what I had. And I've got a cup of it and just a paintbrush. And the directions say to just apply it and let it sit in the sun and do its thing. So that is what I'm going to do. And um, oh my goodness, it's so bright. I don't even know what you can see. All right, let's get done with this. All right, that's crazy. It was working like immediately as I put it on. I could see it lightning and the orange disappearing like magic. It's a good thing I was doing it in the sun because I didn't put any goggles on, which is stupid. Eye protection. So I was squinting, which protected my eyes because it did splash up a couple of times. So I'm gonna have to go wash my hands and my face, probably my whole body, because I'm covered in sawdust or sanding dust. Regardless, I'm gonna let this sit and completely dry out in the sun and then I'm gonna check on it in maybe an hour and see if I wanna do a second coat and then we will reevaluate. But I'm very hopeful about how this is turning out already. Super excited, it's gonna be beautiful. Good morning, next day. Look at it, it's really pretty. I'm gonna give it a quick sanding and then I think I'm gonna try my favorite stain on one of the sides to be inconspicuous so that it can be easily just sanded off if. I don't like the look of it, so we're gonna do that. Change of plans. The 
reddish tone just started to come right back out when I started sanding on the top. So I am going to put stain directly on the top and see how that works like how it mixes with the red and if it neutralizes it that would be like the best case scenario if it doesn't neutralize it then i'm gonna sand it back down and try a different approach i guess it's kind of frustrating but it's how these projects go they can never they're never as um cut and dried as you would hope they are <laughs> all right let me go get my stain i will be using my favorite stain early american I'm really loving it. It is the warm, beautiful wood color I was actually looking for, so this is perfect. All except for the damage on the drawers, which will not stain the same, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Meanwhile, I think I am going to get busy staining the rest of this piece. So excited. a polycrylic top coat. So while the poly is drying on that dresser, I thought that I would attempt a small project to go with it. I want to add these apothecary type bin pulls, but I don't want them to be black. But this is what I already have. So I'm thinking I'm going to use some rub and buff and I can't find my gold at the moment, but I will totally go and dig around if I don't like this one. This is called Spanish Copper and I have never tried it before, but I'm gonna go ahead and try it on these. So let's just try it and see what we think. Get these all out of the package. These were purchased on Amazon in like a huge lot forever ago. I was going to use them on my kitchen cabinets and then I just decided against them. <laughs> so I already have them, so I might as well try to use them. I wanted brass pulls, but there is no rub and buff that is brass. You just have different types of gold. And if I can't find, like if I don't like this Spanish copper color, then I will find the gold because I want it to look like right. Okay, so what you do with rub and buff is you basically just put a little bit. So I'm just going to use this. You don't need very much, but you want to kind of just wipe it on there. And it definitely doesn't have to be perfect. So I kind of like that. What do you think? Kind of like a darker, dark brass. see what these look on the dresser. I have to drill a second hole because right now the dresser only has a single hole. So I'm going to install a couple of these on a drawer and then we'll see if I like this. If not, I'm gonna come back in with some gold on top of this and try to fake the appearance of brass. I did not like that. So I found my antique gold. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit of that. a little bit more like brass so I'm gonna go try that and then we'll see so this furniture project was a beast as all of them are especially when I have to strip paint off of them 
or so I thought. I have done several other pieces. If you want to see any of those videos, I will make sure to link them above and below for you. And there's actually a playlist that you can watch showing all of the furniture restoration projects I have done on this channel so far. All of them I have been extremely proud of and kind of shocked at how good they've turned out <laughs> in the end. This is a very imperfect piece of furniture and I really don't mind that. I want to see the flaws. I want to appreciate it for what it is and what it has been through in life. So while I did fill in the damage on the drawer, it obviously did not stain the same and it's not perfect, but again, I'm all right with it. So I think that it has turned out really nice and I am really happy to put it in my bedroom and use it as a part of my closet organization systems. Thank you so much, friends, if you've watched all the way through. I couldn't do this channel without all of your guys' support. I really appreciate it. Like the video if you like this kind of content. Make sure to subscribe if you're not and share it with any friends you think would enjoy this content as well. I have many great pieces coming up, including that grandfather clock that I showed in my short video. If you haven't seen that, I'll link that up here too. It's a really cool piece that I found recently, but I am trying to get through all of these project pieces so I can reclaim my living room just in time for the holidays and my son's birthday. So join me on these adventures. I can't wait to share more with you. Thanks again. Bye.